Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, it's Kiva here. Here with King Kaze and Ace Kill. Good morning. Yo. What's up? Uh, we're shooting the shit today. We're talking about how apparently it's underwhelming for launch games. Launch games right. is underwhelming, and Ubisoft explains this. We saw an article on Destructoid saying how uh, Ubisoft is explaining how launch games can be underwhelming, and we're just going to talk about this topic. So, do you want to start it off, Ace? Yeah, um, so there's a part that I'm looking at that says, right now all publishers are transitioning their uh, development resources, which uh, is a really uh, kind of, to me, it sounds like a really uh, political way to say they don't know what the fuck they're doing and they're going to try to make everything extremely flashy to show off the new system's graphics. Like, I feel like the first generation of games to come out for the new console are just going to be ridiculously amazing looking, hey, but not have any real substance. Yeah, like, three-hour games that you're going to pay 60 bucks for. Yeah, that sounds like bullshit. Um, but with the consoles just coming out, don't they still have to figure out how everything is working around? Plus, we don't have all those big yeah. exclusives it's that we want like the halo and the gears and you know infamous and all those and we know when those games come out then the consoles are really going to shine because the first party games and the uh the first party sony and microsoft or nintendo whatever they're going to do everything they can to make that game shine and utilize that hardware to its max sure later on i can definitely see that happening but in the very beginning they're going to be as gimmicky as possible I mean, the, the, the kind of poster child for gimmicky games is the Wii, you know, like they kind of overuse their remote to, I, I don't know, because I guess they think they're trying to get the most out of the machine. I feel like when you put too many toys in front of developers, like they don't choose them very well, like they have to do everything. And since the graphics is such a big part of PS4, I feel like that's what they're going to focus on the most. These games are not going to be very good or substanceful. Like Knack just got like a two-star review didn't it what what did mac mac i hadn't heard of that actually and that's one of the 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 launch titles for the ps4 and it's crap kind of a bitch. now now oh, i right, neck. going back uh back to um them making their their launch titles as, as gimmick heavy as possible horrible. i also think it's because with the start of this new generation each company with with their uh, individual I gimmicks know. want to push those out there you know they, they want to make their, their their gimmicks more pronounced as early on in the console's lifespan as possible so that that later on they can they can have you know quality games with with more subtle use of the gimmicks kind of like uh yeah it was i'm sorry i just wanted to inject here but it was like um when the playstation first launched it was all about six axis and I'm, yeah, I remember like, heavily, like heavenly sword. <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah, I, I remember yeah. um, playing Killzone 2 and uh, to rotate the valve and shit, you had to tilt the controller or whatnot. How do you and do um, then the Kinect came along game. and Microsoft is still pushing that thing, even though people don't give a shit about it. Yeah, but but you know, uh, like you just said with uh, with Killzone 2, how uh, they had they had the stupid six axis gimmicks where you had to to tilt the controller to to turn a, a fucking stupid rusted valve or something. Um, but then later on with games like Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, they, yeah. they have the, they, they have six axis and motion, uh, sensing heavily implemented into the game, but it doesn't feel like such a forced gimmick. It does, it, it feels more natural and fluent, like shake the controller up and down to kick off this guy that's trying to fucking rape me or something. Yeah, that, that's the thing, though. Like, okay, so it's kind of like you say, in the very beginning, they're trying their best to sort of get the most out of the system. They want to use all the gimmicky stuff. So, um, I don't know. So, so they have more to sort of pull out of the toolbox later. But I feel like they take it too far. Um, like, I don't know what sort of crazy stuff you can do with the new um, Six Axis. But I feel like Knack is probably one of those sorts of games. Like I feel like, like I, I haven't read much about it, but I, 
I don't know. It just seems that way. It, it's sort of the same problem that I have with uh, so the Vita at the moment, which is sort of our disagreement about that console. Like, I feel like all the games are like, ooh, look how shiny it is. Look at all the things you can do with a touchpad. I don't know. Yeah, but all of the... Well, all of the Vita's flagship mm-hmm. titles that I know don't rely on the touchpad a lot. There, there are those shitty gimmicky games, like the games that came with the AR cards. You know, I forget the... The augmented reality was even a function on the Vita, um, but in the game, say, and yeah, I know you guys have heard me talk about this game nonstop because I am on this game's nuts super hard. Persona 4 Golden, perfect Im- implement of uh, the the Vita's uh, say touchscreen controls. It's okay. not mandatory in any part of the game, other than uh, to get to the the little overlay that you can use to get to the extra bonus content, like the radios and the cool little videos and stuff. You know, it, it it's out of the way, but it, you know it, it's there just just as a cool little little add-on. Well, Persona is a different breed of game. I mean, well, firstly, it's an RPG, and you aren't going to see many of those at launch. And secondly, it's a port, so you can kind of expect that they aren't going to mess around with that too much. Oh, yeah. And I think yeah, Atlas is smart enough it. to not oh. mess around with the gimmicks too heavily. But you can't say that about most games or most companies that, you know, create those launch titles. Yeah, and they they do say, Ubisoft is saying that it's going to, and I'm just reading from the article here, it said, as but, but as, we trans, as we transition resources to the next gen, it's going to be more difficult to that because the power of these machines is going to allow so much more creativity but they said that about the last gen they they kept complaining about how they didn't have enough power to create these awesome uber amazing you know like worlds and atmospheres so i don't okay I don't this, that, that kind of bothers me this time this is right something that kind of bothers here. me about gaming in general like this attitude that we need more power to make better games like i don't agree with that at all nah, sometimes it's just you know game, the man. the not the system itself not like the game system but sort of the way you structure the game itself that can be interesting and ingenuitive like one of the games that i've been on for a long time now like pig. well it's, it's been about a week pig. is um uh, Hotline Miami is such a simple top-down game, but there's so much about it sort of the uh, The tactile way you take down enemies um, and how it isn't sort of uh, What's the word you're looking for Not like unrealistic in the same way like fallout is where like you take a, a thousand hits before you fall down It's it all, all the enemies are just as strong as you um, all the items work in a sort of realistic way and it's fun and it doesn't have the gigantic complicated systems that most of the games do. It's only about nine or ten levels, but people love this game. Like it's got a, a five star rating. Like it's, it's really talked about by a lot of publishers, and it's not even a sixty dollar game. Well, so I don't think you need more power to make a good game. Yeah, yeah. That I was just going to say that. That that just shows that creativity doesn't. You, you shouldn't for creativity. You shouldn't just rely on the. Um, the power of what you have or the machine you can make some pretty awesome shit i mean there there are plenty of awesome games that came out this gen i yeah, mean man. there there are a lot of first gen There's games that really utilize the power of these that. machines like uncharted i remember when i first played uncharted it blew me away i thought it was a lot like tomb raider but so did everyone else but now that tomb raider is out people are saying it's like uncharted but whatever Okay, so so that's the thing. That's the real thing. I just thought about it. That's the real thing I wanted to say about this article. I think launch games are the most underwhelming because they don't target like the hardcore sort of core audience that picks up these games. They want to generally pick up everyone. So as a result, they make these sort of mediocre like gimmicky games so that other people will like be like, oh, look what you can do with the PS4 because they don't realize that these gimmicks don't make the game good. They're just looking at it as a a cool piece of technology they can share with the kids or the brothers or you know the siblings or whatever so they go and pick it up and it's not until maybe a year into the console that developers really start to concentrate what sort of tools they can use to make a good game okay well we're actually running out of time now so i'm in the video here remember to like favorite subscribe if you want to see more and if you enjoyed this video have a good one guys you're a beautiful person See ya.